Hello interested everyone welcome to class 12 biology in this video we will be discussing about drugs and alcohol abuse also called as substance abuse this will be the last portion of our chapter uh, on human health and diseases thereafter we will start a new chapter so regarding drugs and alcohol abuse we will be discussing about some of the drugs which are commonly abused by people and what are their effects upon their health and their behavior and uh, we will also talk about how adolescents or teenagers they are more vulnerable to fall victim to substance abuse and then finally we will talk about some preventive measures towards substance abuse so what is drugs and alcohol abuse or what constitutes substance abuse so definition for substance abuse is use or misuse of legal and illegal drugs and alcohol in amounts or in frequency that impairs one's physical physiological or psychological functions that is called as substance abuse in other words we can say that if there's a person who misuses certain kind of drugs and alcohol in amounts or in quantities that harms one's body function as well as mental function that is called as substance abuse right? now legal and illegal drugs that is about the what law permits or not right if certain kind of drugs are allowed by the law to be sold in the market that will be legal drugs and if there are certain kind of drugs which are banned to be sold in the market they are illegal drugs right so legal drugs are those which are sold over the counter right or uh, prescription drugs those drugs which are prescribed by the doctors for some medical conditions right but what abusers they do is they abuse those legal drugs for or they misuse those legal drugs for purposes other than what it was intended for and right? what it was prescribed for and that will be called as substance abuse right in doing so in doing so uh, the person harms himself both physically as well as mentally right so that is substance abuse now what are some of the common drugs that are commonly abused by people right there are three groups of groups of drugs they are opioids cannabinoids and coca alkaloids which are commonly abused by people so we will be discussing about them one by one So the first one is opioids. Opioids are drugs that bind to opioid receptors present in our brain, spinal cord and digestive tract. Receptors in general they are cellular receptors. These receptors they are present on the surface of the cell and these receptors they have the capacity of binding with specific chemicals thereby bringing about specific cellular changes. Right? A opioid receptor is one such receptor right so opioid receptors they can bind with opioids right and these receptors they are present on the surface of the cells of our central nervous system and digestive tract uh, one such example of an opioid drug is heroin commonly called as smack right uh, chemically heroin is diacetyl morphine right it is white in color it is odorless without smell and it is a bitter tasting crystalline compound so this particular drug it is obtained by acetylation of morphine another drug right so it is obtained by acetylation of morphine here is the chemical structure of the morphine and this morphine is obtained or it is extracted from the latex of this particular plant called poppy plant the scientific name of which is paperwork somniferum right so from this particular plant morphine is obtained after acetylation of morphine we get diacetyl morphine or heroin this particular drug it can be taken into the body via injection or by snorting right and after taking of which it slows down the body function it brings down the heart rate it brings down the breathing rate right so therefore this particular drug is said to be a depressant so that is about the opioids The second one is cannabinoids. Cannabinoids are a group of chemicals which binds with cannabinoid receptors present in the brain. I already told you what receptors are, right? So cannabinoid receptors, they are present in the cells of our brain. The cannabinoids, they can be obtained from one specific plant called cannabis plant, right? So cannabis sativa is a species of cannabis plant. And cannabinoids, they can be obtained from uh, flower tops of this particular plant, from the leaves and from the resin of this particular plant. Right. marijuana hashish charas and ganja all of them they contain cannabinoids and they are op they are produced or they are extracted from the parts of this particular plant called cannabis plant 
एंड मेरुआना हशीश चरण सिंह गांजा यू माइट यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड फ्रॉम न्यूज पेपर्स और यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड इन मूवीज इज वेल राइट सो दीज ड्रग्स दे कैन बी टेकन थ्रू इनहेलेशन स्मोकिंग और थ्रू ऑरल इंजेक्शन राइट एंड अ पर्सन हु एब्यूजेज दीज ड्रग्स ही और शी फील्स अ सडन सेंस ऑफ हैप्पीनेस पैसिवनेस राइट और सडन काइंड ऑफ इनहिबिशन इज ऑल्सो लॉस्ट राइट सो that is the effect right but it mainly affects our body's cardiovascular system right and cannabinoids is said to be abused by sports persons as well another commonly abused drug is coca alkaloid it is also called as cocaine coke or crack right uh, the drug is obtained from the leaves of coca plant the scientific name of which is erythroxylum coca the drug is usually snorted you must have seen in the movies how the villain rolls up a piece of currency note and sniffs the drug right so it is usually snorted that way and uh, the drug interferes with the transport of a neurotransmitter called dopamine dopamine is a neurotransmitter it is also referred to as feel good hormone the release of this particular neurotransmitter called dopamine makes a person feel happy right now the use of cocaine interferes with the transport of dopamine therefore it increases the concentration of dopamine within your body and therefore cocaine acts as a very strong stimul stimulant and it gives a sense of euphoria means happiness right and a sense of increased energy this particular property of this particular drug makes it highly addictive right your body tends to ask more of it every time you take it and everyone wants to be happy it's like a reward system right so it becomes highly addictive and the bad thing over here is that as soon as you stop taking cocaine as soon as you become sober you uh, you tend to undergo a depression right so another bad thing about the use of this particular drug is excessive dosage of cocaine can cause hallucinations in in the person hallucinations means seeing something which is not there right so that is about the coca alkaloid now there are other plants like datura and atropa belladonna which contains chemicals which can induce hallucinations right so these are plants with hallucinogenic properties and there are other drugs medicinal drugs like barbiturates amphetamines benzodiazepines which are prescribed for uh, people undergoing chronic depression or people who are unable to sleep properly so such drugs are prescribed to those people right and uh, there are drugs like morphine which are prescribed to people who have undergone surgery so morphine is a painkiller right so these drugs these medicinal drugs they can also be abused let us now discuss a little bit about tobacco the most abused of all substances right tobacco it is obtained from tobacco plants and it can be used in different ways it can be smoked it can be chewed or it can be used as snuff snuff means kaun sunata lag raha the one which is taken in through nostrils right and the tobacco smoke the tobacco which is present inside the cigarette the smoke of which contains many different chemicals and about 70 to 20 different chemicals are known to be carcinogenic the ones which are responsible for causing cancer okay and uh, apart from that it also contains a chemical called nicotine so here is the chemical structure of the nicotine nicotine is an alkaloid and nicotine is the one which which, which is responsible for making tobacco consumption addictive okay so uh, nicotine what it does is it stimulates the adrenal glands the glands which are present on top of your kidneys and uh, nicotine stimulates the adrenal glands to secrete hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline and these two hormones increases the heart rate and blood pressure of the person right so uh, therefore nicotine is responsible for making uh, consumption of tobacco quite addictive okay uh, it makes a person extra alert so therefore he wants to consume uh, tobacco now apart from that we also have carbon monoxide present inside the smoke and it causes oxygen deficiency within the body right carbon monoxide it can bind to the hemoglobin and reduces its oxygen carrying capacity and therefore it causes oxygen deficiency and smoking is also associated with diseases like cancers of lung urinary bladder and throat i told you tobacco smoke contains different uh, carcinogens right so uh, they are responsible for causing cancers right and it is also responsible for causing diseases like bronchitis emphysema coronary heart disease and gastric ulcer as well right so that is about tobacco now i have told you that many of the substances which people commonly abuse are quite addictive and addiction can lead to something called dependence let us see the difference between addiction and dependence 
Addiction is a psychological attachment to certain effects such as euphoria and temporary feeling of well-being associated with drugs and alcohol. In other words, the consumption of drugs and alcohol induces a certain feeling of euphoria and temporary feeling of well-being. Right? And the person becomes attached to those feelings and therefore the person becomes as, uh, addicted to the use of drugs and alcohol. Right? And addiction tends to lead to frequent use of the substance and many a times even in increased doses. Right? And this leads to the body's dependence on the substance. Now what is dependence? Dependence is the tendency of the body to manifest withdrawal syndrome. This word is important, withdrawal syndrome. So withdrawal syndrome is shown by the body if the regular doses of the drugs and alcohol is abruptly discontinued. If a person is addicted to a certain substance and that person stops uh, taking drugs and uh, that particular substance abruptly, uh, the person's body shows withdrawal syndrome. Now, what is withdrawal syndrome? Withdrawal syndrome constitutes anxiety, shakiness, nausea, and sweating. Right. And in severe cases, uh, withdrawal syndrome can be quite life-threatening as well. You must have seen uh, people in rehabilitation struggling a lot, right, getting rid of their addiction, coming out of dependence. Right. So. Uh, sometimes it can be quite life-threatening as well uh, until some kind of professional help is provided to that particular person. Let us now see what do we mean by adolescents and how they are more vulnerable of becoming victims of substance abuse. Right Now, the period between 12 to 18 years of age, that is called as adolescence period. And people belonging to this particular age group, they are called as adolescents or commonly called as teenagers. Right. And during this particular age group, adolescents, they are undergoing lots and lots of biological and behavioral changes. Lots of hormonal changes are happening within the body and therefore lots of biological and behavioral changes can be observed in adolescents. And it also forms an important phase of mental and psychological development of the, pe of the person. Right. So what makes adolescents vulnerable to substance abuse? So there are many different factors. And one of the main factors is curiosity. Teenagers or adolescents in general, they are very curious. They are extremely curious and their need for adventure and their need for excitement leads to experimentation of different kinds of drugs and alcohol. Right. So curiosity is the main reason of making adolescents more vulnerable to substance abuse. Right. For example, a teenager may say, just try, let us try for just one time. Right. And then later on, uh, they realize that they have become addicted to that particular substance. Right. So curiosity. Now, apart from curiosity, there is also peer pressure. Right? If a teenager gets into wrong company and his friends, his or her friends, they are into substance abuse, then the dead teenager is uh, at the risk of getting into substance abuse as well. Right? And apart from that, we also have academic stress and unstable family. Right? Uh, these days, there is lots of competition going on. Right? And there is lots of academic stress from both parents' side as well as from teachers' side. And such stress can lead or push adolescents into substance abuse. In order to relieve that particular stress, the, the teenager may resort to taking drugs or alcohol. Right? And same goes with unstable family as well. If you, if you have parents who are fighting with each other all the time, right? if you have financial problem in the house, right? so that could also push the teenager to substance abuse. Right? So these are many factors. So these are all the factors that are responsible for making adolescents vulnerable to substance abuse. What are the effects of substance abuse? Let us first discuss about behavioral effects. Right? So people who are into substance abuse, they are generally reckless and violent. Right? They also resort to stealing and vandalism as well. Now, reckless behavior, it is very evident from people who uh, are drunk. For example, the people who are drunk, when they drive, they, they know that they have lost their motor capabilities, but still they drive and then they get into accidents, right? That is reckless behavior because they are not just putting their lives in danger, but also the lives of others in uh, danger as well, right? So that is reckless behavior. And you also know that those drunk people, they lose their inhibitions, they lose a sense of their fear, and they act very violent in front of other people, right? So reckless and violent behavior. And regarding stealing and vandalism, you can think about a person who is addicted to a particular substance and that, that uh, person does not have money in order to fulfill his or her desire for that particular substance, he or she will resort to stealing or vandalism. So these are the behavioral effects of substance abuse. 
So by observing the behavior of a person, you can tell whether that person is into substance abuse or not. Here is a list of common warning signs of substance abuse that you should look out for among your friends. So they are drop in academic performance, unexplained absence from school and college, lack of interest in personal hygiene and hobbies, withdrawal, isolation and depression, aggressive and rebellious behavior, deteriorating relationships, change in sleeping and eating habits, fluctuations in weight, appetite. Right. So these are the warning signs of substance abuse. If you observe any of these behavioral changes among your friends, you should take it as a warning sign of substance abuse. Next is medical effects. Right. The immediate medical effect is coma or death due to overdose. Right. If there is overdose, it can lead to coma or death due to respiratory failure, heart failure or cerebral hemorrhage. Overdose of drugs could lead to coma or death. Right. So that is immediate effect. What about the long-term effect? Chronic substance abuse can cause damages to nervous system and liver. For example, uh, long-term consumption of alcohol can lead to cirrhotic liver. So here's a healthy liver and here's a, a cirrhotic liver. So uh, long-term consumption of alcohol could lead to liver cirrhosis, right, which is quite life-threatening. And uh, substance abuse by pregnant women can harm the fetus. Right? If there's a pregnant woman, if she's into substance abuse, she can harm the fetus, right? Because the fetus is developing inside her womb, right? Consumption of alcohol or drugs can go to the fetus as well and it can uh, interfere with the developmental process, thereby harming the fetus. And uh, we, we have already talked about this one before. Uh, increased, uh, those people who are in, involved in substance abuse, they have got increased chances of getting infections like AIDS and hepatitis. Right. When we discussed about AIDS, I told you that uh, people who take drugs intravenously, they are at higher risk of getting AIDS infection because they share needles with each other and if the needles get infected, the disease can spread. Right. So these are the medical effects. And then we have effects of substance abuse on sports persons. Right. In order to enhance their performance in their own sports, athletes, they resort to misuse of drugs such as narcotic analgesics, anabolic steroids, hormones, etc. Okay. So, uh, it is usually anabolic steroids which are misused by athletes. So, anabolic steroids, it tends to increase the muscle strength and bulk of the athletes. It also promotes aggressiveness of the athletes. Right. So, these two effects, they tend to enhance the performance of the sports person in their respective sport. Now, uh, this use of anabolic steroids and other performance enhancement drugs are not allowed in national and international sports. Right? Therefore, they do doping tests. If they find these uh, substances in the urine of the athletes, right, they will be banned or they will be penalized. Right? Now, uh, I said that these performance enhancement drugs, they usually uh, enhance the performance of the athletes, but at the same time, they also have got negative side effects as well. So, side effects in female athletes by misuse of uh, anabolic steroids, it include masculinization, mood swings, depression, abnormal menstrual cycle, excessive growth of facial and body hair, deepening of voice, enlargement of clitoris, etc. And side effects in male athletes include acne, mood swings, depression, reduction in size of testicles, decreased sperm count, kidney and liver dysfunction, breast enlargement, premature uh, baldness, enlargement of prostate gland, etc. Right. So, the misuse of these drugs in, in order to enhance the performance right by the sports person the sports person also has to undergo all these side effects right so that is effects of substance abuse on sports person so how do we prevent or how do we control the problem of substance abuse especially among adolescents right since adolescents are more vulnerable of becoming victims of substance abuse how do we prevent or control it Right. So there are certain prevention and control measures given in your textbook. They are avoid undue peer pressure, education and counseling, seeking help from parents and peers, looking for danger signs, seeking professional and medical help. Right. And if you read about these prevention and control measures one by one, you will realize that it requires the concerted effort from all the members of the community in order to take care of the menace of substance abuse. Right. Be it teacher, be it parents, be it family and friends, all of the members of the community should get involved in order to prevent and control the menace of substance abuse. For example, looking for danger signs, parents, teachers, friends should, all of us should look for uh, danger signs that we have discussed before uh, regarding substance abuse. And if we find those danger signs, we should seek help. 
we can seek help from the parents and peers we can seek help from professional uh, psychologists psychiatrists we can also seek medical help we can admit a person to rehabilitation center right if all these uh, prevention and control measures are taken we can make sure that a person can live a healthy life and uh, the person can stay away from uh, drug abuse so with this we have finished chapter 8 human health and disease right and in the next video we will start a new chapter chapter number 10 that is microbes in human welfare